Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right From now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome. We're so glad you're joining us today for Jesus the Healer. Come on in. We've been waiting for you. And we are so thrilled to get to take this time to spend with you in the Word. I tell you, what a joy, what a privilege to know what to feed on that's going to make life sweeter and sweeter. And so we invite you, get your Bible, get something to take notes with, and follow along with us because we're believing God for answers for your life. Amen. 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 Welcome to Jesus the Healer. Aren't you glad he's a healer? Yes. And when we minister, we always want to bring you something that's going to help you receive of that healing power even more. And sometimes in receiving of the healing flow, it's not just healing you have to address. Sometimes you have to address something that affects healing. And so today we're going to start ministering on the subject of divine wisdom, the wisdom of God, because in his wisdom is every answer we need. In his wisdom is every help. How many of you know that God is the fountain of all wisdom? Amen. And to, to think that wisdom, God became an author and wrote down his wisdom in his word for us. And then not only that, he gave us a teacher of that wisdom called the Holy Spirit. And Jesus came and demonstrated the wisdom of God, showed us. Uh, he was the express image of the Father. What that means is when you see Jesus at work, when we look in the gospels and we see how he moved among men, that's God at work. So when we see Jesus, we're seeing the Father. Amen. And so Jesus walked in wisdom. He lived in wisdom. He moved in wisdom. And so we're going to talk about it. So go with me, if you would, to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. And we're going to start in verse 6. And I'm going to be reading out of the Amplified Classic Translation. So get hold of that if you can. Maybe on your device, pull that up. I love the, the, the wording that we get here with the Amplified Classic Translation. Again, Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 6, it reads, Forsake not wisdom, and she will keep, defend, and protect you. Love her and she will guard you. Oh my goodness. Did you know that wisdom did that much? Look at it. It says it, that wisdom keeps us, defends us, protects us, and guards us. And so many times people will think, well, I'm believing God to protect my family. One way that he protects us is through this flow of wisdom. Amen. 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 So I want to go on and let's keep reading in verse seven. It says the beginning of wisdom is get wisdom. <laughs> in other words, uh, if our help lies with wisdom, then don't leave that wisdom unaccessed. Get hold of the wisdom of God. You say, well, how do I get wisdom? His word. Amen. Divine wisdom flows in the word. And so, as I said, he has taken his thoughts and he's made them ours. You know, really the word of God is the thoughts of God written down. Yes. He offers, now think of this, God offers us his thoughts. Wisdom offers us wisdom's thoughts. 
then why would we ever say, no, I think I'll stick with my own on this. <laughs> like, what's up with that? Don't stick to our own way of thinking if it's in opposition to how wisdom thinks, how God thinks. Amen. So the beginning of wisdom is get wisdom. Don't leave the word on a table on your coffee table and admire it. Get it in you. Yes. Get that wisdom. Yes. That's right. Amen. Yes. Um, it's, if we need to know answers for our life, don't just say, I need to know, I need to know. Then get in the word mm-hmm. where right. wisdom, where wisdom lives mm-hmm. and partake of it. Meaning yes. this, because God, God's word is God's wisdom, we can partake of it as much as we choose. Yes. It's not God measuring it out to us in a certain measure and say, here, you can only have this much. You can only have that. No, as much as we'll take his word and make his words, our words, make his thoughts, our thoughts, then we are moving in the same wisdom that God operates in. So verse number seven of Proverbs four, the beginning of wisdom is get wisdom. Meaning don't set it aside. Don't buy, don't bypass it. Don't run out to other people all the time and ask what their opinion is. Go where wisdom lives. Go to the word. Amen. So get wisdom. And then the amplified says skillful and godly wisdom. So know this, we need to have skill with the wisdom that comes from God for skillful and godly wisdom look at this, is the principal thing. Mm -hmm. It's the principal thing. And with all you have gotten, get understanding, discernment, comprehension, and interpretation. Verse eight says, prize wisdom highly and exalt her and she will exalt and promote you. She will bring you to honor when you embrace her. My, 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 that, those verses are a, mouthful. It's loaded with our help. So as we promote wisdom, wisdom promotes us. So what's that mean? Promotion lies with wisdom. Amen. 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 Promotion doesn't just come from human thinking, human reasoning. It comes from how God thinks, what God says. So again, when we look at verse six, because we can jump around a lot in this and find so much, but I want us to stay on course Verse, verse six says God, that the wisdom of God will keep us, defend us, protect us and guard us. How does he do that? Through wisdom. When people say, God, keep my family, then you have to follow what wisdom's telling you to do. Amen. We, we can't act apart from wisdom and then say, why didn't God protect why didn't God keep, you know, uh, if you go outside in the morning and there's two, there's two of your four tires on your car that are flat, wisdom tells you don't get in the car and drive it that way. Yeah. Right. You don't have to have God to say, don't drive on two flat tires. Wisdom would tell you don't drive on two flat tires. And when you walk in that wisdom, then God, that's God protecting you. Amen. That's how God protects. The more wisdom we walk in, the greater protection we live in. Now listen to that. The more wisdom we, we walk in, the greater the protection that he gives us, that he can give us. Now think about it. I I know that in, in hearing through the years, different stories, and I'm thinking of someone at an electric, an electrical plant, a power plant. And when they're around, those workers are around such degrees of power, there's a certain way to handle that power. You have to stand in certain locations when you're handling certain equipment. You have to have certain kinds of shoes on or you have to be standing on a mat that you, where you're grounded. All these kinds of things. And they do safety training. Right. Yes. Th- what is that? That's wisdom. Right. There's a wisdom that they teach the employees and how handling that. Um, Somebody was saying because years ago that there was a a person, an employee who had sidestepped the guidelines for safety and they 
they pulled one of the power, um, the power levers and they weren't, they didn't do it the right way and it killed them. It electrocuted them. And somebody said in the community, well, God took them. <laughs> and I love what the manager of the power plant said. He says, I notice God doesn't take near as many of us whenever we're <laughs> abiding by the safety <laughs> guidelines. See, people in, in religion just pushes it off on God, God. But if we would walk in the wisdom that God has made available to us, that's one flow of his protection in our lives. Amen. Um, the Holy Ghost or God does not need to, God through the Holy Ghost does not need to warn us about things that wisdom would tell, that wisdom would warn you about. Amen. For example, just a natural wisdom is you go to cross the street and there's lanes of traffic. You're going to have to look both ways, right? Um, you don't need the Holy Ghost to tell you, look both ways. In daily life, you don't need to say always, uh, God didn't tell me to look both ways. No wisdom told you to look both ways, right? So too many times people are waiting for God to tell them what wisdom already tells them. Does that make sense to you? Amen. Uh, the, the spirit of God won't tell you what wisdom has already said to you many times. You know, the spirit of God has never told me don't drink poison. But wisdom tells me don't drink poison, right? So I don't wait for the spirit to alert me when I come up to something that wisdom says, don't do that. Don't do that. Amen. Um, personally, I don't do things unnecessarily that have high risk associated with them. Meaning, you know, um, let's say how you drive a car. Um, policemen many times will have to go outside of the guidelines of driving the law, right. traffic yes. laws. Uh -huh. uh, they'll have to go through red lights. Why? They're in pursuit right. of someone. Mm -hmm. They're out to protect because someone is, is, is breaking the law. They've got to protect everybody else by stopping that person, oh, right? Yes. So they'll drive through red lights. They'll have their sirens going. They'll go past yeah. speed limits. Mm -hmm. What are they doing? That's associated with their job. It's required of them mm -hmm. to have, be in situations that, where there's high risk. Yeah. But for you <laughs> that are not a law officer <laughs> and you just do things high risk that aren't necessary, then many times we give place to the devil and he'll take advantage of that lack of wisdom to, he'll take advantage of that. So I'm saying sometimes when you're called to do something, it might be in the line of your job. It might be necessary for things that have risk attached, but I don't go out and purposefully find high risk stuff that I'm just talking about for me for me. You know, there are other people that are very adventurous and they do things. That's fine. You follow your wisdom. But I know for me, I know for me that it's wisdom for me just not to do certain things. Then I don't have to believe God for something. Amen. Using a lack of wisdom and a lack of good judgment. Like I said, the devil will take advantage of it. He'll take advantage of it. And so uh, many times if we just fail to walk in wisdom, it can cost us. And we can't say the devil did it when lack of wisdom was not obeyed yes. or wasn't fought. Or let's, let me restate it. Wisdom wasn't obeyed. There was a lack of wisdom being used. That's right. Amen. So verse seven, uh, Proverbs chapter four, verse seven says, the beginning of wisdom is get wisdom skillful and godly wisdom for skillful and godly wisdom is the principal thing. And with all you have gotten, get understanding, discernment, comprehension, and interpretation. Um, in this life, we pursue many things. People will pursue a financial uh, portfolio. People will pursue an academic, uh, something academically. They'll pursue some kind of a degree. It's nothing wrong with doing that. 
but don't leave out the pursuit of wisdom. Because in coupling wisdom with everything else you pursue, everything else you pursue will succeed when wisdom is governing it. Amen. 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 Verse eight says, prize wisdom highly and exalt her and she will exalt and promote you. She will bring you to honor when you embrace her. So we are to prize the place and the value of wisdom for it is one way God protects us. Yes. Amen. Um, go with me if you would. Let's go to first Kings chapter 10 because I want to look at this word prize wisdom. And um, the Amplified says, prize wisdom highly. So that means it needs to be up on your list yeah. uh-huh. of things that you value in life. First Kings chapter 10, and we're going to start with verse 1. First Kings chapter 10, verse 1. And when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. Well, what's that mean? Well, she's, she is in authority in her own realm, in her own country. So evidently in her own country, she was faced with questions. She was faced with challenges. She was faith, faced with decisions she needed to make and she didn't know the answers to them. Right. Well, where does someone who is in her position go? She's no doubt got a council around her. She's got advisors around her. And these things that were facing her were beyond their own knowledge right. of how do we do this? What, what, where do we find our answer? Well, she heard about Solomon. Yes. And so she heard of him and she brought to him these hard questions of her realm. And verse two, it says, she came to Jerusalem with a very great train with camels that bear spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she had come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And so she's laying out before Solomon. These are the questions of my realm. These are things, whether they're political, whether they're social, whether they're economic, um, we don't know, but there was evidently things she needed help beyond what she had access to. Right. So she found the place where yes. greater wisdom yes. was. Amen. Now see what she prized wisdom. Amen. What's this mean? She loved her people enough and her country enough to inconvenience herself yes. to yes. go to where wisdom could be gotten. Right. She traveled, um, in looking at that, where she lived and where Solomon lived was 1,500 miles. Wow. She traveled. Now think of this. Now I haven't left this prize wisdom highly. This is the example of what it means to prize wisdom highly. When a queen travels, she's got to travel with security. Yes. She traveled also with great wealth. Why? Because she's bringing gifts to a king. Yes. Right. So she's got not only have security for her as being the dignitary of her nation, mm-hmm. but she's got to bring security for the treasures. Yeah. Yeah. She's traveling with a great company. And listen, it wasn't a, it wasn't a, a choo-choo train. <laughs> it wasn't a, a boat. It wasn't a whore. It wasn't a car. It yeah. was camels, yeah. baby. Right. Donkeys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fifth. 1,500 miles. Wow. Most, most that lived during that time would venture a, a couple miles from home and that's it. She took a trip, 1,500 miles, the inconvenience, yeah. the cost, yes. the time, yes. the physical hardness on her yes. to support. She's got to bring all this company with her. She's got to feed them. She's got to equip them uh, with instruments to, of war, so to speak, to protect everything. This is a great inconvenience. What's this show? How highly she prized wisdom. So we see her as a demonstration of how to prize wisdom highly. Um, she didn't, and, and the thing we also see when she prized wisdom, she evidently honored her place. She honored her role. She honored her responsibilities by, she wasn't willing to just guess and go, well, try this, see if this works. She wasn't willing. She wanted, she loved her people. She loved her country enough to go to this great expense to acquire wisdom. Uh, We need to do whatever we need to do to gather wisdom, learn it, become skillful with it. Amen. That, uh, 
It's right to spend money to get where someone teaches you the word. Yes. It's right to inconvenience yourself, yes. to maybe drive further than you would normally think of driving to attend a place, a local church where you can hear the wisdom of God, the wisdom of the word brought. Amen. And that's, that's called prizing wisdom highly. When people will not do that, they need to understand that if they will prize wisdom highly, wisdom will deliver them time and time and time again. Wisdom will answer hard questions for them. When the queen of Sheba brought questions, it says they were hard questions. And uh, Solomon told her, it says, when she communed with him, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And verse three says, and Solomon told her all her questions. There was not anything hid from the king, which he told her not. Think of this. Uh, Solomon walked in a divine wisdom that God gave to him and he shared that wisdom with those who prized it. Yes. Those who sought it out. Yes. Amen. Uh, get around someone who knows God. Amen. Get around someone who knows the word Amen. and listen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Don't do all the talking, but yes. listen yes. because you'll hear from them something that will rescue you down yes. the road. Yes. Well, I'm waiting for God to help me out of this problem. Wisdom is what he gives to help us out of, of difficulties and issues. Amen. So she, she, she became a partaker of that which she prized. You have to prize wisdom to become a partaker of it. Amen. Amen. Now in Luke chapter 11 in verse 31, the Amplified Classic says this, the queen of the South will arise in the judgment with the people of this age and generation and condemn them. For she came from the ends of the inhabited earth to listen to the wisdom of Solomon and notice here is more than Solomon. So Jesus is saying this, he's saying she was not even a Jew, but because of her honor, of her respect that she partook of the wisdom of God and it moved her into God's family. And she will sit in judgment over those who were, if I could say this, born to have the covenant and didn't prize it. She prized wisdom. Oh, listen, in her realm, she had everything at her disposal. But she realized what's in my realm doesn't offer me wisdom. No amount of economy, no no amount of wealth, no amount of resources, no amount of education will make up for the absence of wisdom. Wisdom empowers you to use everything God has made yours rightly. In this new covenant that holds every blessing of God, the blessing of God is on us, but wisdom enables us to use that blessing rightly. Move with that blessing rightly so we don't hinder that blessing. So we cause that blessing to flow freely. And if I could say this strongly, Amen. Amen. And uh, when we prize wisdom, we'll be able to utilize all the blessings of God in a way that's going to be far reaching. Um, It'll, if I could say this, what about the anointing of God? Wisdom uses the anointing rightly. What about our authority? We, every single one of us have an authority that belongs to us in Christ, but it's wisdom that directs the use of that authority rightly. What about healing? Healing belongs to us, but it's wisdom that helps us to walk healed. And if we need healing, it's wisdom that will lead us into health. If we, what about prosperity? You can have money, but without the wisdom to handle it rightly. The enemy would love for the opportunity to rob from you. Uh, What about this? What about for your home, Mm -hmm. your family, your business? All these things God blesses us with, it takes wisdom to use them rightly, to handle them rightly. Amen. Thank God for the anointing of God. The anointing of God is the power of God. I prize wisdom as much as I prize the anointing. Mm -hmm. That's right. 
Amen. Because many times people, if we're not careful, well, you know, I thank God for the anointing. I, I want to walk in a greater anointing. Then you have to couple that with wisdom because yes. the anointing has to be handled with wisdom. Yes. Amen. That's Amen. Right. Yeah. Because um, there, there is no greater power than the power of the anointing. Right. Right. That's right. Amen. When we were talking about um, a power plant mm -hmm. using so much voltage a power that's there of electrical power. If it's mishandled, the same power that blesses then becomes a place of, oh, yes. of undoing yes. for someone mishandling it. Same thing with anointing. You have to walk in it with wisdom. Walk in it with great wisdom. That's why you don't want to get this idea, and I speak especially to young people. Oh, I want to have a certain amount of success by a certain age. Well, there's nothing wrong with having a desire, but mm -hmm. you don't want to reach a certain amount of responsibility and increase without the wisdom to handle it because then that becomes the undoing place yes. rather than the increase place yes. and the promotion place. Yes. Amen. So I prize wisdom yes. as much as I prize the anointing because you can't yes. handle the anointing rightly yes. without the wisdom of yes. God. Yes. The anointing for you, the, 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 the blessing of God. Thank God for the blessing of God, but we need the wisdom of God yes. and wisdom belongs to the blessing. Yes. I said the wisdom of God uh, belongs to the blessing. Yes. And so don't, if I could say this, start uh, prizing more highly just things that are tangible to you. Amen. You have to prize that which governs that which is tangible to you. And that's, the, that's wisdom. Amen. So we're going to keep going along this line. You don't want to miss it on the upcoming episodes. And we, we just appreciate the opportunity to come and share these things with you. Yes. And um, it's, it's to help us, if I could say this, keep our, our hunger stirred for the word. Yes. Amen. Yes. I don't care what you're facing today. The wisdom of God holds your answer. You don't need to go through this life going, I don't know which way to go next. Wisdom holds your answer. The wisdom of the word. Amen. Well, you don't want to miss it next time. But until next time, remember this. Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. Jesus gave us the key to his success. He stayed with the plan that God gave him to fulfill. In this book by Nancy Dufresne, God the Revealer of Secrets, you will learn how to know God's perfect will for your life and how to accomplish that divine plan. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. In this classic book by Nancy Dufresne, The Healer Divine, we are presented with a study of the healings of Jesus. Your faith will be stirred to believe and act as the healed God has already made you to be. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. If you need prayer, please call our prayer line. We have trained ministers on staff who are ready to agree with you for your miracle. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DeframeMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible. Every one of us have a job to do in the body of Christ. It's a new day of stepping into places in the Spirit that will bring us into a greater flow. They call for anything else but to help people. A fresh momentum that hits a stride. What is the job of the body of Christ? It's to set people free, get people healed, get people saved. Can you say amen? Hitting a stride in the spirit realm, in healing, and in gifts of healings.
This is Pastor Nancy Dufresne, President of Dufresne Ministries. I want to extend an invitation to you to become a partner with Dufresne Ministries today. The vision of Dufresne Ministries is to move with the Word and the Spirit as we bring the message of faith and God's healing power to this generation. Partnership is a two-way street. We commit to bring the uncompromised Word of God to you, and you can, by faith, become a partaker of the grace upon this ministry. Then our partners bring their prayer and support. If you receive from this ministry and have been blessed by it, please pray about becoming a partner today. God bless you. Some of the arms of the ministry that you'll support include a traveling ministry with crusades and conferences held nationwide and abroad, the printing and publishing of books, CDs, and DVDs to get this message out, Fresh Oil Fellowship, a ministerial organization for the encouragement of five-fold ministers who desire to flow with the Word and the Spirit, TV and other media broadcasts, that reach various parts of the world. Our Jesus the Healer television broadcast is currently on six different networks, potentially reaching 329 million households. Benefits you receive from partnership include a 20% discount on all Dufresne Ministries products, a monthly partner letter from Nancy Dufresne, consistent ministry updates and communication, and the prayer of agreement with our partners. Be a part in carrying out the vision. Pray about becoming a legacy partner today. For more information, go to our website at defrainministries.org.